Oh, Sayo. Oh, oh Sayo. It's a Cherokee greeting. Starting right off, this weekend, uh, up there in Northern California, somewhere adjacent to Mount Lassen, is been the bear dance. By this time of the day, you know, they, they would be finishing up, they'd probably be singing hand games. Uh, the bear dance, the way to avoid them, the way to avoid them, uh, is Maidu. That's the Maidu people. In, in the past, I have you know, attended that many times and so forth. And so that is one of the themes. I've done this, you know, here uh, just a year ago. So a year gone by already, like that. Uh, but I have been, you know, for the past uh, few episodes, maybe I think since March, been uh, focusing on ancient Greece. I think it's very, very important. I would say, you know, uh, I have an art history education. I'm an artist, and that, you know, qualifies my uh, approach to this subject. Uh, one thing is that the ancient Mediterranean, and mainly Greece, you know, has a lot of imagery, a lot of imagery of uh, all kinds, um, vases and statues and temples, and so uh, very, very, very uh, fruitful for uh, anybody as an artist to be interested in the images. Uh, having an education, and put it in a simple way, is uh, being introduced to what it is, and secondly, where to find out, where to find out more about it, or go in other words, uh, education is the start of an interest. So that helps to give a little qualification here. I also have a Cherokee education, so I have something there also here in Turtle Island, and that helps along, and also uh, that helps to realize, of course, uh, the American, United States, English, American idea of its history is somewhat of a fable at best. Anyway, I want to start off right with, with the, the Greek part of the bear dance. We're going to be in ancient Greece, and the goddess Artemis is who is related to this. Now, a qualification to use a word, god and goddess. These words are, you know, really inadequate uh, for what in other languages is being expressed, but it's convenient to use them, but I'm using that with that uh, qualifier and so forth. Uh, I think in the Hebrew, Eleath, Eleath would be the forerunner to Senor El, that definitely became a name for uh, Mr. God, for instance. Uh, the, the Greek, you know, Theos and Thea, uh, they seem to be from an earlier language there in the Mediterranean, maybe the Palestinians, uh, and so forth. These are a little bit different ideas in, in that. And starting off with Artemis as this god, goddess who is, um, yeah, something of a composite. And mostly she is in the house of Cancer, and Cancer is traditionally um, given a sign of the crab. I had also previously mentioned the donkey. Also, there's the moon. So Cancer is also the moon. And most of Artemis and many of her temples are figured in the house of Cancer and the moon. If you can go over here to, this is my drawing. Is it? Uh, have a good lighting. I didn't test it. Is there a reflection on it? Oh, just turn turn this bright light off of it. Just the, the knob, the, the the light bulb itself. Just just touch touch the there like that. How's that? Even that one? Oh. Tip, tip it up. Oh, this is... Oh, 
Okay. <clears throat> Sorry for the interruption. <clears throat> anyway, this is my drawing, and in this drawing, I am expressing um, Artemis, Artemis as the moon. And because the moon moves through all the houses, it's as much as to say that Artemis is her own sign, and in, in the moon, you know, she can be in all houses. Certainly, uh, when she's the huntress, she's in Sagittarius. And when she is, you know, the Evernal the goddess, she's in Scorpio. And when she's the terrestrial goddess, I would say that she's in Cancer. So, this is my uh, drawing to express just that. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go over here to this drawing, and I think Manny need to touch one of the lights. Mm -mm. Huh? No? Leave it that way? Okay. You're on this one. This, this is my uh, replication of Artemis. She's called, you know, Artemis of the Net. And she's carrying a, the bow and arrow, also as signatures of her. And there's another story to accompany that with a net. The net often appears adjacent um, to her as a symbol. And we go down below that. I've replicated this. This is called a herm. A herm is a figure you know that's mounted with a head this way. This one in particular is different because it is a herm of Artemis, and it's actually been called the Artemis Lokia, and that means the Artemis of the post-term discharge. After a woman has given birth, there is you know an immediate discharge, and in Greek, that's the term for that. And I've replicated this as uh, her head surmounted a gray, a, a square stone um, pillar as that is. And Pausinius had reported this, uh, I think it was the third or fourth century, as having seen this in the, the place, the Peloponnese, that's the southern Greek, you know, uh, uh, Megapolis, the uh, center of Megapolis there. <clears throat> and Peloponnese also has um, the Omphalos there, north of the, in Peleus, uh, a naval stone. So that's also, you know, part of that. And also, with that, we can still stay down here. Also, these are two of her attributes. The deer is her attribute, and the goose or the swan. This is actually a modern votive piece for her. And you stay, stay down there, this here, uh, this yellow triangle stone with the gold piece in the center, uh, Delos, this is the island of Delos. It is a very small island and it's there in part of the uh, Cyclades, it's the very southern part of the uh, Aegean Sea <coughs> and sort of south of Athens, give it that a location. And Delos itself means, you know, gold or gold bearing. And so that's why I have this stone and the, the triangle, as we would call it, is definitely the symbol or the brand name for Delos. Different locations actually do have signature brands, and that's the one that I have here for that. And Delos, even though it's a very small island, and um, oh, I don't know, not too long ago, I guess, adjacent to there, there is a, another uninhabited, very small island, um, uh, Despotica. Despotica has been discovered as the source of the marble that was used to carve a lot of the statues. And in modern time, um, how that was discovered was a shepherd, kind of like with the goats, as it would be. Um, his goats were in a, some kind of a corral, and they uncovered a coin, a Byzantine coin. The Byzantine era, you know, somewhat, you know, a couple thousand years ago. And that uh, alerted, you know, the scientists or the experts to do further excavation, which began to uncover 
all the archaeological significance on this tiny island that yielded marble. <clears throat> Let me show this example here. This I have replicated. I actually found this was engraved on a rock overlooking the Truckee River just east of Sparks, a place uh, that is known for many petroglyphs. And this is a picture of a Byzantine coin. For instance, this is all to relate these things to here. And uh, it's called a Byzantium of Poili. And it's definitely is saying that this is a money lender, a money lender, or something called money, money bag. And actually what verified this is after that I had uh, discovered this, I was accompanying Vivian Olds, who was part of previously an expedition of the archaeological, the uh, amateur archaeologists, to other petroglyphs there, and when I discovered this one. And in a boutique up in Julian, following this discovery, uh, Claudia was looking in there, and this woman had a coin collection displayed there in the showcase, and I actually saw this coin. <laughs> so, uh, verifying uh, this Byzantine coin would be, I don't know, somewhere between uh, around 1500 years ago, I would think, like that. And so, that also helps to signature part of my theme here is showing the connections or relations of the ancient Mediterranean here to Native America. So that's very, very considerable since there has been a genocide and a cultural side and an herbicide and all, all kinds of things, you know, to uh, obliterate um, an inherited history here. So showing, you know, some of the evidence of that. And uh, here, if you can go over to here, uh, we're talking about the bear dance in Northern California as actually stemming from the very ancient Mediterranean, and we'll call it the cult of Artemis. Artemis was anciently figured as the bear, among other things, but strongly, you know, the bear, sometimes the mistress of wild animals and things like that. And what I'm depicting here uh, a place uh, east of Athens, a ways, and it's called Bararan. Bararan also means the bear, and it was the sanctuary of the constellation of Ursa Major, that is the great bear constellation. And that's why I have a figure here and a figure of Artemis, and that at this time of the year, then, you know, there was the uh, Baronia. Baronia is a festival in which we call little girls were made as little she bears, Arctos, little she bears. And over here, I have put this figure in here. She's holding up her hands like, like paws, and she has paws for feet. And, and this is all it's like in the forest. And this is exactly what also happens at the bear dance in Northern California. Um, little girls, you know, wear wreaths of the Artemisia sage in their hair and around them. And that's what I have figured here, as well as the rabbit in ancient times would also figure in this festival. This is new life. This is all for new, new life. And I want to go down here. This, <laughs> this is to. Uh, this is means this is the the lion. This was a giant stone lion, that's also on a small island, a little bit south, it's kind of southwest of Athens, Attica. <laughs> and this stone lion is very very ancient. And whether it's a lion or a panther, it's hard to say, but the way I have it here is because quite a, a years ago I have seen in the Pueblo of Zuni the shrine of the stone lions, uh, which is rather secluded and surrounded by many, many deer antlers around. Again, the deer is also an attribute 
of Artemis. And whether this is a lion or a panther, here in Native America it is reckoned as a puma. A puma is a mountain lion. And the image I have here resembles the one in ancient Greece, for instance. And I have located in this way. Even though this is a small island, again, these people, referring to the common name of the Zuni or the Ashui, are most certainly from the Mediterranean and most certainly are Berbers or Libyan speaking people. Now I have, and, and this is one of the things that really cinches it for me is that this stone lion or the stone puma or panther who this resembles. And exactly what it means, well, in, in the ancient zodiac there of Greece, it may be Aquarius. It may stand for Aquarius. It may also stand for the winter solstice. This one in Greece on the island of Caia also seems to be orientated in such a way that it may face north and part of it is facing to the southwest um, where there is an ancient monument of Artemis. So that, that's an alignment there. And further that island goes all the way up alignment up to Mount Olympus and from Mount Olympus it extends all the way down to Crete, to the island of Crete. And in the island of Crete there is the cave of the bear. And here what I have here, in that cave, forever and ever, made by you know natural uh, formations, con concretions like that, is something like this that I have here in the shape of a bear. And also while I'm touching on the Zuni, the Ashui, this here, this is a carving, a wood carving um, of a charm, we call it, of um, a bear. And the bear figures very predominantly in the Zuni, you know, as a healer. Uh, and that's very, very especially what this is. Also, here, you see that this is a turtle or a tortoise. This was the very one that Gina Dickinson had um, as her spirit helper. And also, it is the very ancient image of cancer before, evidently, the crab became to be used as a symbol. But the turtle is also cancer and figures, you know, and, and one of the islands there actually has this as its symbol. So we, we can have all of that. Um, can I just go, you know, right up here to, to this? I've replicated this from Rhea Cambudis' book, The Gods and Goddesses of Ancient Europe, the subtitle. And um, this is an artifact, it's, I don't know, 7,000 years old or something like that. I guess that it must have been fashioned out of clay and baked, or otherwise I don't see how it would survive. And this is the bear, and these here on the side are actually, even with the holes, are actually the flaps for somebody to tie it to their head. And this is also a way of saying how very, very ancient the bear, or maybe mother bear, uh, definitely figured in the ancient culture there. We also just learned that a very, very ancient um, skull outside of Africa has been located that's close to a half a million years old. Uh, which shows an antiquity of humans, you know, in the eastern Mediterranean. And however, these uh, ancient people might have figured into any of this culture that we have some trace of. So that's what I have this figured here. Now we're going here. Now this, again, this is the constellation of the Great Bear. And that figured very majorly, you know, for uh, whether they call it the bear dance, but something to that effect where uh, young women, little girls, were uh, somehow dressed as bears or initiated into a bear culture of Artemis. And when you make a beeline from this constellation past Cassiopeia all the way over to the little bear, you know, 
Ursa Minor. And that's what I have here. And if you go down right here, this painted plate is of the, uh, uh, the Acropolis in the Parthenon, actually, in Athens. So I have this as a symbol of Athens. And traveling from Athens towards Delphi, which I have this here, Delphi in the Star Lord is figured as the Pole Star. So on, on the way there, one does encounter uh, Mount Helion, which means the, the helix. And it seems to be some kind of a natural phenomenon reported. It's a massive island, and looking up, uh, island, it's a massive mountain. Looking up, it, it seems that the stars are twirling around, and that's how it got its name, helix. And what is happening there is that this spiral of stars over there and, and Pegasus. Because of the squareness of these constellations, Pegasus, by this line drawn, drawn all the way from Big Bear to Little Bear and this location, uh, then brings out Pegasus, which is also a very large square constellation. It looks like a very, very big square. And so Pegasus here is figuring, is strictly in a star constellation. So that um, there are various kinds of alignments here in the ancient Mediterranean. It would seem very long ago there were something that we would call great teachers who could do all this. They must have made alignments of the stars and eventually the planets and very, very eventually the zodiac. Now all of these alignments there that I'm mentioning are done by people who are native in that Mediterranean. The astrology is coming from people who are not native in the area, like from Babylonia, mainly uh, the near, near East, or those kind of places. So <clears throat> then that, the zodiac could then be figured into what I'm calling here the, the star lore, or planetary lore, uh, something like that. And the, the characters that uh, figure it, you know, characterize it, sort of have been added on. And all this seemed to have a, a kind of a general consensus. Again, uh, Greece is also scattered through many, many islands. And each of these islands has its own little something or other. And the Delphi was one of the main centers. It was figured as, you know, the center of the earth, or at least you could, you know, tap into to the uh, magma of the earth itself from there. But there were also other centers in Delos here. Uh, that's also a center. And each of these centers had their own particular alignments. So there are alignments for the stars. There are alignments for the zodiac. And there are seasonal alignments, you know, for the equinoxes and for the solstices and so forth. So all of this was very, very, a uh, figure very, very long time ago. And so much of it uh, is still in evidence is that's how we can retrace it the way I'm just sketching it out here for you. Now here in Native America with, with you know, the genocide and all those things, it's very, very hard to tell, you know, how much of this was uh, comprehended and brought about here. There are fragments, there are little pieces, and certainly in the language to definitely show that these people have stemmed from the ancient Mediterranean and how much of their knowledge they brought with them. A recent paper coming out of, uh, well, an important figure in the Pueblo of Zuni uh, that we have seen, he is saying about 90% of our property, our land, has been absconded by the federal government through its systems of mapping. <clears throat> so constantly, you know, trimming down, trimming down to practically the only thing is this might be the property the Pueblo itself is on, excluding anything around it. So uh, it's, it's very hard because even when people still have some remnant of some location, it seems the Navajo seem to have the most incomprehensive uh, world or universe according to their own culture. 
and I've, I've much you know, reported on that. So these are just ways of noting these things out as a way to realize that we have other realities that we can bring to the fore, that we can realize. So now, with that, let me go to this feature up here. Uh, this is the bear dance. Now in the bear dance, you can see here, this is a man, he has a bear skin. The, the bear man is the way he's called, and the men who accompanies him with this, the songs are priests. They're priests and they have knowledge for that and they prepare for that, you know, definitely through fasting and anything else. People might prepare for uh, some very uh, sacred uh, ceremony that, and in this, and here he is wearing this bear skin and here curving over. This is a very, very large uh, curved stick. It's very heavy with this, you know, like raffia. And this is called the rattlesnake, actually, like that. And it figures in this ceremony. In the ceremony, the people gather in circles, in concentric circles. The very youngest people are in the center circle and a little bit older, you know, and then the oldest people on the outer circle. And as the singers sing these songs, I'll give a, a medley of some of those songs, the circles uh, shift, you know, kind of dancing-wise, you know, uh, in opposite ways as concentric circles. And the bear man following whoever strong young man is carrying this heavy pole uh, through the circles, you know, the bear man will stop at somebody, usually a woman, young or old woman, and he will paw the ground and he will in some way uh, usher her into the very center of the circle, you know, uh, would look, you know, very fertility-like. And pretty much that's, that's how that it's going. Here, I put these in here. He doesn't actually carry them, but um, it's a way of mentioning everybody there has these twigs. It's like sage. And this was the tip-off. It's the Artemisia. Artemisia is this somewhat like sage, but it is exactly the telltale to this Artemisia cult in the, Medi the ancient Mediterranean. That's what definitely um, tipped me off in this way and the way that's being used. So um, they, they bring out, you know, many, many um, piles, you know, piles of this that they've harvested and people help themselves to it. And as the bear, you know, circles around, comes through these uh, circling lines, people are to, you know, stroke the bear skin with these uh, uh, leafed uh, twigs that, that we have. Um, that's all part of it. Some people, you know, even want to hit, hit the bear skin with it. But uh, that's why I have it here. But he doesn't actually carry those here. And as that is going on, eventually the bear man will begin to wind off from the circles and, and make his way up through the trees. And um, the, the, the pole man, he may go or he might not, because this is a very heavy thing uh, that he's carrying. But what's happening as the bear man unwinds the circle, the circle uncoils, you know, like a snail, you know, it's uncoiling and following the bear man, who eventually will make it down to a running stream, you know, a light running stream. And there people will understand to throw their uh, switches of Artemisia into the stream. And at the same time, the bear man has, you know, taken off his bear skin and hang it on a pole or a branch and do likewise, you know, kind of, kind of stroke it like that. And basically, uh, this is the conclusion with the idea that everybody will be changed or cleansed or purified, you know, with all of that. So, I'll try a few things here to go along with that. This one, titled, Bear Dance. Here is our wheel of dreams. 
It carries our voices and makes them turn on the morrow of bone centered in life, round and rounding about our first world, this strong wheel. We shape our songs upon this wheel and spin the native names of earth and sky, wind, water, mother bear, Yonusti, and cousin coyote, Waya, the paws and claws of our roundhouse council, Anaskie, Aka, the talking circle. So that, that's one thing. And here's another one. You can see the bear, bear paw. He comes from the north. He comes to fight. He comes from the north. See him there. I throw dust on me. It changes me. I am a bear when I go to meet him. Send word, bear father. Send word, bear father. I'm having a hard time. Send word, bear father. I'm having a bad time. My paw is holy. Herbs are everywhere. Herbs are everywhere. My paw is holy. Everything is holy. My paw makes everything holy. And here's another one. Bear, bear that I am at the cliff, coming through the mountain. I hold my head up greatly, bear, bear that I am. They say that I've green mountains. They say I went into the river, bear, bear that I am. When the sun rises, I travel about. My mind shakes as I go about, bear, bear that I am. You came to me, you came to me, hey, 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 you came to me walking, you came to me calling me mother, you came to me, my child, came walking, calling me mother, mother of noble family, bear, bear that I am, calling me mother as to no other, to me, my child, you came walking, hey, 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 hey. Now with that, here's a medley of bear songs. Yo, you might know to, I know to, you might know to, I know to, ooh, you might know to, ooh, I know to, yeah, you might know to, ooh, I know to, oh, you might know to, ooh, I know to, ah. Another one. Oh, we are we lay. 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 Oh, 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 oh. And do guy. Now this last one here is about the little fishies that are swimming in the stream. And there's one little fishy that turns sideways and he swims along with the stream. Hey, la la ya ma na na ne tu a ne tu a ne tu. Oh, la la ya ma na na ne tu a ne tu a ne tu a ne tu. Hey, la la ya ma na na ne tu a ne tu a ne tu a ne tu a ne tu. Oh, 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 oh! Now all of this is to begin the new year. Oh, he said in the ancient times, the, the bear child, she would hold a rabbit as signaturing for the new year. These songs are about the new year and all of the animals and creatures, you know, um, you know, coming out, coming into being as we now begin the summer 
And reminder again, way back there in ancient Greece, and uh, before the Christians took over everything, uh, there was something very similar to that. And it would seem very, very much that the people here, known to Americans as Indians or Native Americans and other names, are actually people culturally and sometimes linguistically and uh, so forth have stemmed from these ancient people uh, in the Mediterranean. In the Maidu country up there, I've seen, you know, there are petroglyphs that definitely are older than God, and they may be uh, signatures of the kind of alignments that were once very well known in this culture in the ancient Mediterranean. So that's the way that I'm concluding uh, this particular talk featuring the bear dance and Artemisia, the goddess of the bears and other wild animals.